Islands What Occurs album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from Islands, a Montreal-based indie rock and indie pop act uh, headed by Nicholas Thornburn of the Unicorns fame. And they've been at it since the mid-2000s and at first uh, they were exactly what I was looking for. I mean, honestly, for me, by 2006, I mean, the indie sound was already starting to waver on me a little bit and their debut album, Return to the Sea, just, oh man, th this album's good, baby. I mean, not only was it a breath of fresh air at the time, it's still a breath of fresh air to me now. I still love the hell out of this record. It's ambitious, it's progressive, it's super catchy, and yeah, it's a little long, but as a Unicorns fan and Nicholas Thornburn fan, I wanted to hear more, and this was pretty great. However, since then, in the island's discography, I feel like I am on a roller coaster that I've been trying to get off of, and I just wish would slow down a little bit. I mean, shortly after the Return to the Sea record, uh, they put out the Arms Way album, and a bulk of this thing but was really good, really classy, uh, but the highs were high and the lows were even lower. This thing was a massive drop in quality. Bright spots reinvigorated once again my thoughts on modern indie rock, but the low moments reminded me of why I was getting a little tired of it. Uh, that goes double for the Vapors album that followed up. I felt the highs were even higher and the lows were even lower. Asleep in a Forgetting was okay at best. I mean, there were parts of this album that were absolutely gorgeous and super passionate, but there were also some really boring lows that once again reminded me of why modern indie was kind of putting me to sleep. And Ski Mask, there were some quaint moments, there were some quirky moments, but a bulk of this material was really clumsy and awkward. Oh, but deep down, I did still have hope. And later on in the year, after they released the Ski Mask Project, they released the Should I Remain Here at Sea record, and I honestly liked it. It was nothing outside the box, but it showed Nick and company actually playing with some fire once again. And Taste, their last studio record outside of that B-Sides and Rarities collection they put out last year, I thought this record was a lot of fun. God, remember fun? And honestly, leading up to this record, I didn't have a lot of hype for it. I mean, I, I wasn't really craving another Islands record right now. However, I did think a lot of the singles leading up to this thing were really classy and honestly some of the band's most eccentric material in years. And honestly, the result is maybe their best record since their debut, Return to the Sea. And I do mean that. Drown a Fish early on the album, I mean, this track is Awesome! This is one of the most memorable indie rock singles that I have heard all year. This is the old school indie that I grew up with, with the eccentricities intact that I fell in love with from Islands. It's so charming, and I really do love Nick's performance here. I have a lot of the same feelings on Tangerine. There's nothing new or nothing fancy about this. This is very mid-2000s sort of pitchfork era indie. But this riff is really memorable, really catchy. It's got a little sense of urgency to it. Dare I say it gets my blood pumping. I mean, personally, I don't know where this has been hiding, but I'm glad that it's here now. A lot of this album is, by hook or by crook, really decent indie. Arachnophobia did give me a little, you know, sense of uh, dread coming down the pipe, mostly because a stripped-down indie tune like this on an Islands album 10 years ago would have absolutely sucked, but this track actually has some really serious vibes to it. It's charming, it's warm, it's inviting for a more subtle stripped-down sound from the band. Uh, this is actually doing a lot for me. I would absolutely listen to this track again, not to mention Nick's very heartfelt performance. Once again, I'm very pleased to report just how into this album he sounds. And that goes double for Move Some More. This one may have a very soft and subtle riff, but it does have a little drive and urgency to it. There's just so much heart on display. When this track picks up into a more standard indie tune, it's done really gracefully. And the vocal portions that we get uh, during the folk portion of this track, my god, they are good. And Bull Weevil is really one of the most eccentric tracks here, but I've adored it since it dropped as a single. It's got an off-kilter groove, some serious swagger to it, some really memorable one-liners by Nick as well. It's an odd one, but it's got some serious charm to it. I really love the synth work as well. Yeah, a lot of this record, I mean, just sounds like Islands just putting in a little bit more effort than usual, and the results are obviously here. When this album gets a little ugly, though, ugh, like this album's title track and intro, What Occurs, uh, this was not the intro that I was hoping that I heard. I almost wanted to head for the hills. This is the kind of bull crap that I just absolutely despise in modern indie. They are trying so hard to be quaint here, but just failing so miserably. This ho-hum instrumental sounds ripped out of 2008, but like in the worst way. 
and it really doesn't get any better as this track rolls on. I had seriously some doubts leading forward after hearing this intro. And listen, we get a slew of really soft, very subtle, very beautiful tracks on this album that are very passionately performed. David Geffen's Jackson Pollock is not one of them. Uh, this is just so boring. Nicholas sounds like he's about to fall asleep, so am I. Like, I hear this, and I hear people saying that Indy's out of ideas, and I point at this track, and I say, maybe you're right. I think it's the worst track here. And On the Internet just sounds like a relic that has been on Earth, but I'm really sad that it has. It's just so ho-hum and thrown together. I feel like I've heard this track a hundred times, and 50 of those times it was from Islands. I just don't have anything really to say about it, but we've been here. So yeah, this album absolutely does have a dark side to it that gets very boring very quick. But outside of that, I mean, I don't know how many Islands albums Nick has left in them, but consider them back in my good graces. The Hang track uh, later on in the album. It is 23 seconds, but it is 23 seconds of really quirky, very charming, very witty performances. Much more interesting than most of what passes for indie these days. As a matter of fact, the whole bulk of this finale of the record is pretty awesome. Like, Sally doesn't work here anymore. This is a very meditative, very soothing, hypnotic track. It has a serious sense of nostalgia to it, and I was worried that Islands would drop the ball here. But truthfully, it's really warm and inviting and very sweet on the ears, and Nick's performance is one of his most tender here. Like, he truly showed up for this album in a big way. This track is gorgeous. Talk is Cheap, on the other hand, is a very sharp, almost bluesy number with a little grit to it. And I'm going to be honest with you, it did take a little while to warm up to me, mostly because Nick's vocal performance, this is just not where I like hearing him. But outside of that, I love the campy keyboards, I love how raw this comes off, and the finale here is really dramatic, A+. Avoid from a distance absolutely scared the hell out of me. I mean, this kind of sounded like the sort of indie folk that just went out of style years ago, but man, is it done good here. I love the introspective lyrics and the warm harmonies. Once again, nothing fancy, nothing out of the box, but it's performed so well that I feel like I'm at home. And the end, this album's finale, is absolutely adorable. This is an upbeat and quirky indie tune with Nick at his most animated, and I love his performance here. And honestly, it's just a really colorful, sweet, very animated finale that has a very sort of old school singer songwriter 70s feel to it and I really do appreciate it. Yeah it's not a bad album at all I mean if you consider where Islands have been for the last decade this is actually one of their best releases in a while. As a matter of fact listening to it more than more this may be my favorite thing they've done since Return to the Sea and you may not find anything groundbreaking or out of the box here but Islands when on are just just so solid and so heartfelt and so introspective and that's what we get here and it's not mind-blowing, but something about this record just warms my bones and I can't get around that. So, I'm feeling a strong 7 on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.